Good morning and welcome to my uh, Monday morning rant. Um, today I think we're going to kind of do a soft rant just because that's kind of the the mood I'm in. So kind of let me get started with this. Uh, yesterday I got a comment. I get more comments on my stuff on Hogan than anything else that I do. And I, I think the more I think about it, for good reason. I mean there are some die hard Hogan fans out there. And uh, you know it's a funny thing in the, in the, in the world of golf is that you get people that have got beliefs, and they're not letting them go no matter what. Not a chance in hell they're going to let go of their beliefs. You know, I've got a, as, as if you've ever seen my studio, you can see it's full of Hogan pictures, eight foot by four feet high. And then I also have little mini pictures that I've done too, because I like to show people in them. And I'm all prepared for you. I came prepared today to, uh, the comment I got the other day was, Hogan doesn't go on his front foot. And, you know, I can show you, I can show you how, I mean, I'm taking a look at that picture there. And I've studied that picture, and I'm, I'm sitting there saying, if you can tell me Hogan's on his right foot, I'm going to eat your hat. However, I now realize that it wouldn't matter how many pictures I showed, no matter what I do. I've got, I've got the chance to maybe change about 1% or 2% of golfers out there that are going to listen to this. There is an X amount of golfers out there that are sitting on the fence, sitting on the borderline, not sure what to think. And I got to be careful because those other ones that want to believe Hogan put his weight on his, right, on his back foot, I couldn't change their mind no matter what. You know, I never go into a project trying to prove I'm right. I must be weird or something because I always try to prove I'm wrong. You know, I really don't want to prove that I'm right and then 30 years later still can't do it. I mean, I don't, I don't see the benefit in that, but I do appreciate, I really do, that people write into me and say, you know, Mark, uh, Hogan's pictures show. All I would ask of anybody is to go on YouTube and get a, uh, uh, the video footage of Hogan and take a look how far forward this guy moves. He had one of the biggest lateral motions I've ever seen in golf. The second biggest one would be my uh, good friend George Newton here. George, that guys that don't rec recognize him there, George is probably the second or third best ball striker in history. I believe he led the PGA Tour in greens and regulations for 10 years in a row when he was out there. Jack Nicholas once said he had a million dollar golf swing with a 10 cent putter. Well, you know, George was no slouch. He won a bunch of tournaments out there, um, and he's probably still a legend out there. now. I want you to just take a look at there. There's George's starting position. There's his finish position. Look how far forwards he's moved. Okay. Again, not trying to make myself right. I, I see the pictures. There's the infamous picture. There's a couple of them in Mr. Hogan's book. The, again, I will state again, best pictures I've ever seen, except they give a lot of us the wrong imagery. The famous picture of Ben Hogan striking the golf ball. But what people don't notice is the golf ball's in the air. See, that changes everything. When you take a look at that picture and the little ball's got little woofers on it that show that it's already hit and it's already in the air, if you take a look at that and didn't know that, absolutely Mr. Hogan is way behind the golf ball. But if you recognize, if you move the ball back down, you notice that Mr. Hogan's head was right on top of the ball and then a split second he's two feet past the ball with that lateral motion that he had. He had that lateral motion to stop his left wrist from breaking down to stop the hook, which Mr. Hogan feared. But again, you know, I'm not going to convince, I'm not even going to try to convince those people. All I would do is suggest that you might want to go back and look at the video footage. I'm, I'm absolutely not a fan of, of straightforward pictures. They do lie. They have lied. I could make one heck of an argument that photography and slow motion cameras have do done anything for us as far as getting us better totally can make a great argument about that. I could totally make an argument that the new young teachers of the world are too obsessed with photography and too obsessed with numbers. And somewhere in the mix they forgot to teach you how to do it. Ah, just, just, again, just, just my opinion. So I want you to take a, take a look at that. Take a, um, um, I think YouTube can be a wonderful teaching aid, but you know what? The internet and teaching aids and websites like my, like my own they're only as good as, as the teacher instructing them. It is, it is funny, is it not, that we instructors can take a look at the same pictures 
and come up with different opinions of what that picture is trying to say. It's amazing. It really, it really is amazing. I think the bottom line for you guys though is, if you're if you're improving, doing what you're doing, keep doing it. If you're not improving and you're like the majority of people putting in tons of time and not getting anything out of it, I'd like you to like take a two minutes of reflection to think about maybe it's possible that the information you're getting is not correct. Because I'm going to suggest to you there's a really good possibility that's true. I'm going to suggest to you that you might want to take a look and you know I'm, I'm offering a, a, a free 24-hour trial on my site. I promise you that if you go on there, I did this on purpose by the way, if you go on there you will quickly find out if you like what I'm saying or if you don't. I am not trying to trick anyone. I am not looking for the masses because I've got no chance on getting the masses to come to see my site. I'm not going to sit there and say, you hey, just shift your weight from your back foot to your front foot and distance comes from your hip speed and I'm, I'm, I'm just not going to say that because I don't believe in it. So please do so. For those that are, you know what, it really comes down to, if you're happy and your game's improving, keep doing it. If it's not, don't keep going to the driving range trying to do the same old thing and expecting a different result tomorrow. Check the website out. Again, you'll quickly know if you like it or not. Hey, if you don't like it, no harm, no foul, right? Hope you enjoyed. Bye now.